Before we begin our story, get yourself comfortable and cosy while I tell you a little bit about tonight's wonderful sponsor, Snoozeband. Snoozeband doubles up as an eye mask with thin, padded Bluetooth headphones built in, so now you can press play on your favourite sleepy cat story and immerse yourself in the experience free from distraction as you drift off to sleep. They offer a few different styles, and recently I've been enjoying the Snooze Band Deluxe. The Deluxe is perfect to take with you wherever you go. It rolls up nicely and comes with its own satin pouch. It also features a built-in zip for easy access to the speakers and can be used to insert a heat or ice pack. The Deluxe has ultra-thin headphones and works wonders for side sleepers like me. The material is beautiful and thick, it's soft and breathable, and with a battery life of 13 to 15 hours, the Snooze Band Deluxe can be worn all night. Now for the good part. For a limited time, Snooze Band are willing to offer my listeners 15% off their purchase using the code SLEEPYCAT15 at the checkout. And this is valid for all their range. Customers in the UK get free 48-hour delivery on all orders and international customers get free delivery when they buy two or more products plus your 15% discount. So to all my sleepy cats around the globe, this is a great chance to buddy up with a family member or a friend and treat yourself to these premium sleep headphones. Snoozeband also has a six-month warranty, and if after two weeks you're not completely satisfied with your headphones, then they offer a 15-day money-back guarantee. However, in my opinion, and judging by the reviews, I don't think you have anything to worry about. So, for an immersive sleepy cat experience and a wonderful night's rest, go to snoozeband.co.uk and use the code SLEEPYCAT15 for 15% off. I will include the link in the description and the comments. And without further ado, let us begin our story tonight. And thank you to Snoozeband for sponsoring this episode. A warm welcome to this very festive Middle Earth sleep story. Tonight you will spend a magical Christmas Eve in the heart of the Shire, a land of tranquil beauty full of magic. Before we begin your adventure tonight, we will do a short breathing pattern known as 445. This is designed to help you slow down and quiet your mind after a long and busy day, preparing you for a good night's sleep. So, when you are ready, just exhale any remaining breath that you have. And as you feel the urge to breathe in, then inhale for four. Hold it here for four. And release for five. Allow the body to become heavy and your mind to empty. 
So that's in for four. Hold for four. And breathe out for five. Imagine that you are blowing away any remaining worries or thoughts. Again, that's in for four. Hold for four. And breathe out for five. Just let all of it go. Continue to breathe in this way in your own time. And as you let go of the day, allow yourself to sink deeper and deeper into comfort. And now, allow your breath to return to a natural rhythm and feel a new heaviness running through your body as you sink into the mattress. Allow your thoughts to fade now and for your imagination to come alive as we spend a magical Christmas Eve in the Shire. You find yourself travelling by horse and cart through a beautiful flat countryside topped with a fresh layer of snow. The morning blizzard has finally settled, the sky is clear and you are left with an untouched white haven all around you as far as the eye can see. Thick trees pepper the land and gently wave in the wind. Their bare branches are dusted with snow. A handful of robins and blackbirds dart across the winter sky. You are accompanied by a tall, proud wizard, known back home as the Grey Pilgrim and a very dear friend of yours. He has a stoic posture, but a warmth and kindness radiates from his gentle heart, giving him a subtle, magical glow. He wears a long grey cloak and a wide-brimmed pointy hat that casts a shadow over his eyes. Below the shadow falls a thick beard, traced with silver and white. A wisp of smoke rises from the long pipe tucked firmly in the wizard's mouth. Nestled under his arm is a crooked wooden staff, with small branches creating a tulip shape at the top. As you ride, the wizard mutters a low spell under his breath. In the next moment, the snow covering the track road begins to part effortlessly, 
providing you with a smooth and comfortable passage across the vast white landscape. The sky is marbled with turquoise and sapphire, backed by the golden light of the late afternoon sun, and a refreshing winter breeze is brushing your cheeks. You are wrapped in a thick fleece jacket and a woolly hat with warm snow boots that come up to your knees. All of your clothes are lined with enchanted wool from the sheep of the Shire and they give off a pulsing heat that echoes throughout your body. Your thoughts turn now to the rolling hills of the Shire and you picture all the tiny little houses peppered through the hills and along the river, no doubt already decorated for Christmas. You imagine yourself back inside the local tavern, enjoying a wonderful feast and sitting by a warm fire, surrounded by laughter and friendship. Not a care in the world, and all the comforts of home. Then, you suddenly remember that the wizard is famous in this land for his enchanting fireworks. And while his eyes are fixed on the road ahead, you turn and peek under the thick blanket covering the cart. A wave of excitement runs through you as you glimpse an endless array of colourful, magical fireworks ready for tonight. Your journey takes you through a small woodland grove packed with thin, gangly trees. As you enter the wood, a canopy of branches forms above you. A winding track road guides your way through the trees and is bordered by rich green grass dotted with odd patches of snow that has sieved its way through the canopy. Lining the road are colourful flowers curled up tight, shielding themselves from the winter breeze, a dusting of frost on their petals Huge icicles droop down from the bare branches of the trees, and to your left, a small stream has completely frozen over, creating a wonderful swirling pattern on the surface. Different shades of blue are mingling together, with jagged silver rocks protruding from the ice. It is quiet and peaceful here. Even the bird song of the countryside has faded now behind the dense cover of the grove. Usually in spring, summer and autumn, this woodland is filled with many beautiful animals peacefully coexisting in this mini paradise but all have migrated now, or are hibernating for the winter, resting in comfort with their families. The empty woodland appears to enjoy this quiet respite, while it lasts. As you travel side by side with the wizard, you are filled with a deep comfort and a quiet reassurance. You can allow yourself to completely relax and let go, knowing that you are protected under his watchful eye. You turn to him, admitting that you are glad he is with you today. The kind old wizard lifts the brim of his hat and his soft blue eyes give a radiant glow as his beard twitches with a smile. He puts his arm around you 
and whispers that there is nowhere else he would rather spend his Christmas. In the next moment, you emerge through the end of the grove, and you are met by a small bridge arched in cream-coloured stone over the frozen river below. Beyond the bridge, in the distance, you see the rolling white hills of the Shire. Here is a land of eternal beauty, untouched by the outside world. A land of hope and friendship, of laughter and love, of warm food and a comfortable life. It is the most wonderful place in the world, and it is your home. Perfect white hilltops sweep the horizon, coupled with a silver glitter reflecting the low sun. Underneath the hills are little wooden cottages, each with a perfectly round door in different colours and two porthole windows on either side, all illuminated by a soft yellow light from within. Poking through the snow are small brick chimneys, all puffing away in their own steady rhythm and covering the village with an enchanted silver haze. As you make your way over the bridge and through the borders of your village, you see Christmas trees in each garden, decorated with homemade trinkets, baubles and fairy lights. There is a holly wreath on every door, and the houses are lined with yellow lights along their fence, giving their gardens a soft golden glow. One or two halflings tend to their gardens, shoveling snow and hanging up final decorations. As you ride by, they tip their hats to you, wishing you a wonderful day and a merry Christmas Eve. With a slow, deep breath, you take in every little detail of this beautiful village. You are finally back right where you belong. The wizard turns the cart to the right now, down a thin gravel track. And just down the road, you can see your front garden peeping out, backed by your very own little house under the hill. The familiar old apple tree rests in one corner, its now bare branches dusted with frost. As you get closer, you notice that the local halflings have planted your very own Christmas tree, decorated with baubles, candy canes, and festive toys, all wrapped up in golden fairy lights. The perfectly round door is painted in your favorite color and topped with a holly wreath over the brass handle in the middle. And then, perched on your fence, you spot a baby red squirrel looking at you with their innocent eyes, 
an impatient wiggle in their tail. As the cart rolls past your garden, the squirrel leaps onto the side of it and climbs up along the wooden panels. They clamber over your shoulder and curl up in your lap. You greet them with a gentle stroke on their head and they sniff your hand affectionately. With a happy heart, you remember your first encounter with this fluffy animal. One morning, before your journey with the wizard to the hidden elven valley, you rescued this creature from the apple tree in your garden when they slipped and nearly fell. After feeding them from your hand and welcoming them to your home, they quickly became a permanent resident in your garden. And now, whenever you return from an adventure, your little friend is waiting, ready to welcome you home. The wizard leads you on through the rolling hills, backed by the now setting sun. A golden red shimmer reflects on the snow, bathing this land in a heavenly light. As you round a corner, you see halfling children sledging down a long sweeping hillside, all laughing together as their different coloured bobble hats flap in the wind. A few of the children are building a snowman on top of the hill. You watch them twist a carrot into place before stepping back to reveal a very happy snowman wrapped up in a red and green scarf and enjoying the blissful innocence that surrounds him as he overlooks the golden white hills. Then the halfling children spot the wizard, and they run down the hill, giggling with excitement. Their little legs follow your cart, desperately trying to keep up, as they shout at the top of their voices, begging for some magical fireworks. With a smile, you turn and give the wizard a nudge with your elbow, but his face is stern and his eyes are fixed forward. Just then, his lip begins to quiver and his eyes brighten with mischief. Instantly, there is a burst of small firecrackers behind you in all the colors of the rainbow. The children give a cheer of approval as they jump up and down with glee, and the wizard gives you a subtle wink. There are huge Catherine wheels and sparklers of gold and silver erupting from the back of the cart. The magic of Christmas and the innocence of childhood is captured perfectly in this moment. And right now, you cannot help but feel seven years old again. Your journey takes you down a shallow hill now towards the very heart of the village. It is not yet five o'clock, but night comes early at this time of year, and as the last light of the sun falls behind the horizon, the cart trundles over another stone bridge 
and into the main square at last. There are endless wooden market stalls lit by wonderful lights of red, gold, blue and green and the village square is busy with the hustle and bustle of many halflings. In the middle sits an enormous Christmas tree, a deep dark emerald filled with golden red baubles, soft yellow lights and handcrafted trinkets. Atop the tree sits a bright silver star turning by itself and pulsing with a magical glitter. It is made from pure stardust gathered by the elves, the wizard explains, and as a token of friendship was gifted to the little folk of this land. As the wizard brings the cart to a stop, you place your squirrel in the top pocket of your jacket and they peep out over the top, sniffing the air inquisitively. You wander over to the wizard who is tying up his horse and he gives you a bright red apple. You approach the trusty steed and feed them from your hand giving them a gentle scratch behind the ears. You thank them for bringing you home just in time for Christmas. In the next moment, the wizard places a hand on your shoulder and you begin to wander together through the markets. The sky has darkened now into a deep, rich blue, and the marketplace twinkles with a trail of fairy lights, casting a protective glow above you. There are two long rows of wooden stalls, each with a curved roof topped with snow. The huts are filled with everything from handcrafted clothes, trinkets and toys, to homemade sweets, gingerbread and pastry, fresh hot chocolate and mulled wine coupled with orange or cinnamon. There is the sound of a halfling brass band just outside the market that only completes this wonderful festive atmosphere. As you meander through the busy markets, there are children running through the crowds, laughing and playing together. Many halflings are trading or selling their wares, and there is friendly bartering going on. Some of the little folk are buying last minute gifts or indulging in a homemade sweet treat. One stall has a long trestle table outside with barrels of fresh beer at each end, the finest brew in the south farthing. Already a few of the older halflings are swaying happily at this table, sharing stories and enjoying the festive merriment. Suddenly the smell of melted chocolate begins to wash over you as you approach a green and red market stall. It is decorated in golden lights with a large candy cane outside and a gentle steam rises from its little wooden chimney. The tantalizing smell only tempts you further and before you know it you are inside the hut standing directly over a huge pot of bubbling hot chocolate, as if by magic. You look suspiciously at the wizard, who only shrugs innocently before giving you a mischievous wink. The halfling shopkeeper gives you a knowing smile 
and you watch with bated breath as she pours a thick, creamy hot chocolate into a small clay mug, a light steam rising from it. You take the warm mug in your hands, and the wizard pays the shopkeeper, ordering another for himself. As the hot chocolate touches your lips, a smooth, warming sensation begins to fill your mouth, softening your lips and your tongue. It trickles down your body, relaxing each and every muscle, and a soft, warm vibration begins to pulse through you. This enchanted drink is melting away any remaining thoughts and releasing all the tension from your body. You are relaxed, weightless and free, as if you are floating just above the ground. A beautiful warmth rests in your stomach and spreads out down your legs all the way into your toes. A deep comfort runs through your arms into your hands and your fingers. You savor these wonderful sensations and simply enjoy this magical festive drink. With the last mouthful of hot chocolate, you place your mug on the table with a deep, satisfied sigh. You give the halfling a smile and a bow, bidding them a Merry Christmas before making your way out of the hut and back through the winter markets. You are met once again by the fresh December air that is wonderful to breathe in. The atmosphere all around you is utterly enchanting and you are filled with a homely Christmas comfort. Not too far ahead is a group of halfling children laughing and playing together. They are building a gingerbread house atop a low wooden table and piecing together the final bits. You recognize some of the faces from the mischievous group chasing your cart and enjoying the early fireworks. They greet you both with big smiles and beckon for you to come closer. One of the halfling children with thick curly red hair has noticed your squirrel in your top pocket and stares with a wide-eyed wonder. You gently lift your companion from your pocket and ask the tiny child if they would like to hold the squirrel. You reassure them that they are very friendly. The child nods their head without a word, too excited to speak. In the next moment, your lovely squirrel snuggles up into their palm, apparently enjoying this extra attention. And as they sniff their hand, the child lets out a happy chuckle. Just then, you feel a tug on the bottom of your coat, and as you turn to look, you see the smallest of the halfling children gazing up at you with big, innocent eyes. They hold out a piece of gingerbread in their tiny hand and ask very politely if you'd like to put the door on their gingerbread house. It is the last piece. With a warm smile, you kneel down and tell them you'd be delighted to help. 
they respond by suddenly growing shy and pressing their chin into their chest, giving a sheepish smile. You gently take the final piece of gingerbread and the little halfling pipes white icing along the edges. Then, in one careful movement, you slide the gingerbread door into place. As you remove your hand, the house stays intact, strong and proud. You give a sigh of relief as the crowd of children jump up and down with excitement. The wizard gives an approving nod, letting out a low chuckle. The red-haired halfling holds out their hands to you now, and your squirrel hops back into your palm. You place them back into your top pocket as the child thanks you with a beaming smile. You wish them all a very happy Christmas, and the halfling children wave goodbye for now, as you and the wizard journey through to the end of the market, coming out on the other side. As you emerge from the crowd, Two very mischievous halflings appear in front of you, as if out of thin air, a wide grin on their faces. You know these kind, warm-hearted halflings very well. Both are dear friends to you, but they do have a habit of finding themselves in a lot of mischief and they have quite the reputation throughout the village. The wizard gives them a curious stare with a raise of his eyebrow, but underneath this serious demeanor, you sense a deep love for these two halflings. Then your wizard bursts into a smile and greets the pair with a warm hug your group shares a happy embrace and a rich laughter fills the air. The wizard tells you it is time for him to prepare the firework display so it is done before the Christmas feast. With a subtle wink, he tells you to be sensible now and before you know it, he has disappeared back through the markets and towards the cart. Your two companions admit they have been waiting for your return, and with a cheeky smile they add that they have something to show you. You follow behind your friends as they lead you through a small crooked gate, and out onto a snowy hilltop that slopes down into the party field. The field is peppered with gold and silver lanterns, like tiny fireflies below. Many halflings are mingling together in crowds, getting ready for the wizard's fireworks. To your right are three wooden sledges piled up on top of the hill. Your two halflings look to you with a smile and you each take one sledge and perch at the top of the hill, a bubbling excitement in your stomach. You line up between your friends, and a quiet suspense fills the air. Together you count three, two, one, and off you go. Gently now, you begin to drift down the snowy hillside. It is a long, shallow hill, and you are gliding on the snow at a perfect pace. A new freedom is washing over you, 
and the cool breeze gently strokes your cheeks. You are in complete control and you give yourself permission to just be in this moment as you allow all other thoughts to leave your mind. Your little companion rests in your pocket, sniffing the air and enjoying this wonderful ride with you. You share a wide smile with the halflings and you each trace a hand along the snow as you drift effortlessly down the hill. The field below is full of the hustle and bustle of many halflings laughing and playing games together. You can see your wizard rolling a wheelbarrow full of fireworks and putting the final touches on his display. There is the luminous glow of the firefly lanterns pulsing in gold and silver rounded off with the enormous party tree guarding this sacred land. It is the perfect picture. One or two stars are beginning to show themselves and the full moon beams down a silver spotlight guiding your way in a gentle glitter. It feels so wonderful to be home at last and enjoying the Christmas magic of the Shire. As you reach the bottom of the hill, your sledge comes to a natural stop. You roll onto the soft snow, sharing an infectious laughter with your two halflings. You thank your friends for this adventure, and through the chuckles, they whisper that this was only the beginning. They place a finger on their lips and beckon for you to follow. Under the cover of night, the three of you creep through the snow, round the back of the huge party tree. And there, resting on the trunk, is one of the wizard's fireworks. It is enormous and twisted in colours of blue and green. The halflings turn to you with mischief in their eyes, telling you how they slipped it from the cart earlier and you know instantly what they have in mind. You are hesitant to disobey the wizard, but you cannot deny the excited temptation running through you. One of the halflings takes the firework out from under the tree, sticking it firmly in the ground. The other produces a match from their pocket and strikes it. Suddenly, you hear a branch snap behind you, and you turn in a flash. There stands the powerful silhouette of the wizard towering over you. The moonlight reveals his bushy raised eyebrow and a disapproving stare. The two halflings stop in their tracks, blowing out the match and dropping the firework. You feel yourself freeze on the spot, a wave of nerves in your stomach. The wizard reveals he saw these two halflings pinch one of his fireworks the moment he arrived. It was to be expected, of course, but what to do with the three of you now, he mutters to himself as his stern eyes flick between you. 
to your disbelief, his face softens, and the wizard lets out a low laughter, telling you that if you are all so desperate to light one, you need only ask. You give a sigh of relief as the wizard takes you all into a warm embrace, proclaiming that all is forgiven in the spirit of Christmas. He even offers the three of you the chance to light the first firework, and you cannot help but wonder if he has been at the gaffer's home brew already. With a new excitement, you quickly make your way to the main field, dotted with gold and silver lights and packed with halflings. A collection of colourful fireworks wait in the ground, ready for the display to begin. The wizard places your borrowed firework front and centre, and you huddle around it with your two halfling companions. One of them strikes another match, and the three of you lock hands around it agreeing to start the display together. The flame touches the fuse of the firework and it lights with a golden fizz. You quickly step back and join the wizard at the front of the crowd as the burning fuse edges closer and closer. Suddenly the flame disappears and the firework lets out a hiss, propelling into the sky. The firework soars up and up, deep into the black beyond. And just then, there is a beautiful eruption of colour. You feel a ripple of blue and green beaming across your face, and the firework spreads like a blossoming flower through the night. A new excitement runs through the crowd as the wizard steps forward, and with his wooden staff to hand, he begins to cast his magic over the rest of the fireworks. There are gold and silver streaks disappearing into the air, followed by a kaleidoscope of colour swirling together in the sky. One of the fireworks takes the shape of a huge red dragon soaring through the night and over the moon. It bellows out an orange flame above you, and you are blanketed with a beautiful warmth and a deep comfort. The dragon glides over the crowd and disappears beyond the snowy horizon before erupting into a dazzling display of colour. A rainbow of fireworks arches over the sky now, backed by a pulsing golden glow. Another firework fizzles into a glistening white horse, galloping down towards the ground and across the front of the field. There are little firework birds darting across the night, and an enchanted blue whale leaps over the party tree, crashing down in a wave of turquoise and sapphire. You cannot help but gaze in wonder at these majestic fireworks. You hold your squirrel in your hands now, as their innocent eyes trace the colourful night, their steady breath 
rising and falling in the palm of your hand. You look over to the wizard in full control of this magical display and to your halfling friends both with their arms around you. There is nowhere else you would rather be tonight and in this magical moment nothing else matters. The wizard lights a small box of fireworks with his staff and a wonderful collection of silver whiz poppers begin to pepper the air around you. The halfling children chase the whiz poppers across the field, desperately trying to catch one. Thin blue fireworks shoot up into the night and they give a subdued pop leaving behind a collection of glowing blue orbs, like little moons dancing across the night. It's as if you are floating ever so slightly above the ground, immersed in a kingdom of starlight. It is a breathtaking display, full of magic and wonder, and you feel so blessed to be one of the lucky few to witness it. This is a memory that will stay with you forever. As the display comes to an end, there is one final eruption of red, green and gold. It falls like glitter over the crowd and is met by a thunderous applause. As the last few sparks slowly fade, a low murmur begins to run through the crowd. Rumours have spread that up in the local tavern, the Christmas feast is nearly ready. You feel your belly rumble, and with the wonderful memories of this display still flashing through your mind, you follow the group of hungry halflings back up the hill, ready for a festive banquet. An excited buzz fills the air, and you walk side by side with your wizard and your two halflings, reminiscing on a beautiful day so far, full of wonder, laughter, and all the magic of Christmas. You reach the top of the hill and follow the crowd through a rickety wooden gate and into the main square. The market stalls are empty now, but continue to glow with golden fairy lights. The round green door of the tavern rests underneath a snow-topped hillside and the walls curve out towards you in a horseshoe. Porthole windows are peppered in perfect symmetry and a large sign swings above the door with an emerald green dragon in the middle. You are filled with the desire to sit by a warm hearth, completely relaxed, enjoying good food, wonderful company, and all the comforts of home. At the entrance to the tavern, welcoming the guests, is a small grey-haired halfling 
the most famous halfling of all, and a very old friend of yours. As soon as you lock eyes, you both give a warm smile and fall into a tight embrace, laughing with joy at seeing each other once again. The old halfling whispers in your ear that too long is the time spent apart from our friends. He turns to the wizard, congratulating him on the most excellent fireworks, never failing to disappoint. Truly, he adds, a night to remember. Then, this old halfling pulls you to one side, telling you that tonight, after the great feast, you are invited to join him for a Christmas nightcap at his house under the hill, along with the wizard. Putting your arm around him, you gladly accept the invitation and guide him gently into the tavern. You are met with a wave of heat and the sound of a gurgling fire set in one corner of the tavern, underneath a stone fireplace. The smell of a cooking Christmas feast begins to drift out into the air. Many halflings are already huddling together at long trestle tables, laughing and sharing stories over a fresh local ale. The floor is made up of round clay tiles, providing a soft warmth under your feet. The dark oak beams are perfectly spaced apart, and many oil lanterns are dotted around the tavern, giving off a soft golden glow. The wooden bar to your left is backed by endless barrels of beer, each with their own small tap. A small crowd are laughing together and calling out for more ale as three or four halflings work away tirelessly, keeping up with the demand. You find a seat on a long trestle table in the middle of the tavern and sit between your two halfling companions. You set your squirrel on your shoulder and their eyes dart around the tavern, hoping for a spot of dinner themselves. You join in with the bubbling conversations around the table, now full of many more halflings most of whom you know or recognize. Stories and fables are passed around the group now. Your wizard and the old halfling recount tales of dragons, dwarves and adventure. There is talk of fierce battles, great kings of old, and trolls turned to stone by the rising sun. With an ale firmly in hand, the old halfling recites elven poetry, describing beautiful gems of starlight as pure as the moon, forged in the very first age of this earth, and said to hold powers of untold magic. There is a golden aura radiating from this old halfling, as all the focus of the tavern is fixed on him. He might be a little different from the other folk, but there is a deep love and respect for this famous character, shared by all who dwell here. You feel blessed to call him your friend. In the next moment, the kitchen doors swing open and a parade of halflings emerge, carrying wooden trays over their shoulders. A beautiful blend of smells 
ripples through the air. Roasted chestnuts, home-cooked carrots and potatoes, braised red cabbage, fresh roasted garlic, pigs in blankets, hot gravy boats, and a Christmas goose as the centerpiece. A few halflings are going round each table, pouring drinks. There is ale or mulled wine for the older guests, and juice or hot chocolate for the little ones. Just then, a halfling chef walks over to your table, carrying a very tiny plate of freshly roasted chestnuts. The chef puts it down next to you, a festive treat for your furry companion. In one quick movement, your squirrel leaps down next to the plate and begins to devour their tiny Christmas feast. The entire table cannot help but chuckle at this lovely little animal, and you stroke their head now as they nibble away in bliss. When the final tray is put down, you are told at last to begin. You fill your plate with the wonderful food, choosing all of your favourite Christmas treats and topping it off with a rich, hot gravy. This is food for the heart and soul, and with every bite there is a warm and homely comfort filling your body. Your refreshing drink cleanses the palate and soothes your mind, quieting any remaining thoughts. As you gaze around the tavern, enjoying your feast, you feel completely at peace here, and full of love for all these people around you. You are grateful for the wizard, who is always there for you, guiding your way and comforting you in times of need. You are thankful for your furry companion, who teaches you the value of unconditional love, and for your halfling friends, with whom you have so many magical memories, and who truly are the very heart of this land. You know with surety that no matter where life takes you, you can always come back to your home in the Shire and be reunited with all of your friends here, and enjoy the peaceful tranquility of this enchanted land. As the feast comes to an end, you sit back full and satisfied, with a belly of hot delicious food, and a little hint of tiredness begins to wash over you. You hope that it might be time to head back to the old halfling's house under the hill, but as you turn to speak with him, you notice he has climbed up onto the table, a full tankard of the gaffer's home brew held loosely in his hand. He begins to make a slightly slurred speech about the importance of community and friendship, and how happy he is to be in league with such excellent folk. He turns to you, giving a mischievous wink as he sways with a smile. You cannot help but laugh at this wonderful old halfling, a real treasure of this land. Your wizard stands up with a chuckle and puts his arm around the old halfling. He announces that the time has come for the lighting of the magic Christmas lanterns. A new excitement mingles around the tavern, 
and gradually, one by one, the crowd begins to filter out of the door and back out into the cool Christmas Eve. You pick up your squirrel, whose little round belly is protruding now. You place them back in your top pocket and they fall asleep instantly. As you leave the tavern, two more halflings are standing at the door, handing out the lanterns. They are made from a thin white fabric and have a small unlit candle at the bottom. You take a lantern and follow the troop up a long winding pathway, led by the wizard and the old halfling. You walk side by side with your two halfling companions, marching together in a peaceful, satisfied silence. The wizard never mentioned these lanterns to you, and you wonder what magical surprise awaits you now. Above you, the glitter of the night pulses in a starlight dome, and the white orb of the moon beams down, illuminating the rolling landscape. As you reach the top of the hill, you can see right across the Shire. The many houses under the snow-capped hills are glowing with golden lights from their windows, and the colourful decorations pepper their gardens. You watch in amazement as the wizard casts a silent spell over the land and every single light of the Shire goes out. And then your lantern lights by itself, giving off an enchanting pulse in your favourite colour. The wizard announces that these lanterns are an opportunity for you to send a Christmas wish to someone you love, and when the lantern disappears into the night, you will know that your wish has arrived. You allow your thoughts to drift to someone close to your heart, and think of the wish that you would like to give them this Christmas. When everyone is ready, the crowd begins to count down. Five. Four, three, two, one, and together you let go of your lanterns. A rainbow of light ascends into the sky, and thoughts of that special someone fill your heart as you send off your wish and your love. The constellations are out in full force and are the perfect backdrop to the multicolored lanterns. Looking up at this majestic display, you suddenly have the feeling that everything will be okay. The light from the stars eases your mind, and you feel a sense of tranquility floating through your body. One by one, the lanterns across the sky begin to fade. Your eyes are fixed on your lantern as it slowly moves further and further away and towards the starlight. And now you watch with a full heart as your very own lantern dims, 
before finally disappearing into the night. Your Christmas wish has arrived. As the last of the lanterns begin to fade, the lights of the Shire flick back on in perfect timing. There is a beautiful heaviness washing over you now, with a quiet fulfilment and peace. It has been a night to remember, one that will stay with you forever. And now your two halfling companions give a wide yawn, tired out from their day of mischief. They bid you a warm good night and reassure you that they will see you tomorrow for a Christmas walk through the Shire. They turn to the wizard and the old halfling and bid you all a very merry Christmas before trotting off down the hill, humming a happy tune together. As a gentle snow begins to fall and the night air starts to cool, you think it might be time for a Christmas nightcap. You place your arm around the old halfling and walk side by side with the wizard as you make your way back across the hill and towards the loveliest house of them all. You take a moment to really appreciate the night sky, full of a magical starlight pulsing above you as the gentle snowflakes pepper your cheeks. One or two shooting stars pass overhead and you cannot help but wonder if these might be more Christmas wishes on their way to loved ones around the world. And then, just as you round a corner and approach the top of another hill, you see a beautiful homely hut waiting for you. The garden is lined with a brown wattle fence made of thin branches weaved together. A wooden gate sits in the middle, sealed with a metal latch. From the gate are a series of stone steps, rising to the left and leading all the way up to a perfectly round emerald door with a brass doorknob in the exact middle. There is a soft glow coming from the two porthole windows on either side of the door. For one last time tonight, you turn and gaze out over the majestic hillsides, dotted with round doors and golden lights, enmeshed with a falling snow. There is the distant noise of halflings bidding each other a merry Christmas and a warm good night before the land finally falls into silence and the village enters a peaceful slumber. The old halfling opens the gate as you and the wizard follow behind now up the shallow stone steps, arriving at the front door. As the door swings open, a beautiful warmth envelops you and you step inside the perfect little home. 
with the door firmly closed behind you, you take off your thick snow boots, your woolly hat and your jacket, hanging them on a wooden coat rack in the corner. You gently remove your squirrel from your pocket and place them on a small coffee table, fast asleep. The old halfling produces a mini blanket and places it over your furry companion, keeping them cosy tonight. The rich crackle of the fire fills the air and the wooden floor is toasty under your feet. The gentle ticking of an old clock rounds off this perfect atmosphere. The wizard lights one or two oil lanterns and they give off a soft glow through the rustic living room, illuminating the dark oak beams arched above you. Outside the porthole windows, the snow falls thick and heavy, creating a pile on the window ledge. Meanwhile, the old halfling has disappeared into the next room, only to return a moment later holding three Christmas stockings, with your names stitched across the top. Then, from his pocket, he pulls out a tiny stocking, no bigger than your palm, a gift for your lovely little squirrel. With a quiet excitement, you hook them over the mantelpiece, one by one. The halfling then pours you and your wizard a drink of your choice, and the three of you share a warm smile. You clink your tankards together and bid your friends a Merry Christmas. Then you slowly bring it to your lips and enjoy your first sip of this delicious Christmas drink. The wizard sits back in one of the two armchairs and takes from his bag a large leather-bound book with thick pages of old yellow parchment and he flicks through in a comfortable silence. You wander over to the big comfortable sofa the sofa you have fallen asleep on many times. As you sit down, you feel all the weight leave your body. Your dear halfling sits next to you in a second armchair, twice the size of him, and his feet wiggle above the floor. With a satisfied sigh, he picks up a large red journal and begins to write, occasionally chuckling to himself as he ponders his own wonderful memories of tonight. You take the time now to just enjoy this peaceful atmosphere and to simply be. The sound of the halfling scribbling away, mingled with the presence of the wizard, the ticking of the clock, and the warmth of the fire is utterly enchanting. You take in this wonderful cottage with dark oak beams curved across the roof the beautiful stone fireplace and the magical snowfall just outside the window. With a smile now, you recount every little detail from today and reminisce on what has been a magical Christmas Eve, full of joy, laughter and friendship. Your thoughts turn now to the lighting of the lanterns and to that special someone who you have sent a Christmas wish this year. 
You keep this person close to your heart tonight, knowing that they will always be with you, no matter what. Just then, the halfling stands up and rummages through a small chest. Finally, he pulls out a thick red blanket with white stitching along the edge. You know this blanket very well. It is of elven make and deeply enchanted. Many times when you have slept in this house before, the halfling has laid this blanket over you and its magical enchantments have relaxed your body and melted away all of your worries. The old halfling passes the blanket to you and whispers that this is yours now. He knows how much you love it and would like you to keep it. An early Christmas present, he adds. This truly is a special gift and not one given lightly. You bring the halfling into a warm hug and thank him for this wonderful present as the wizard watches on with a soft smile. You lie down on the sofa now and pull your warm blanket over you. Instantly there is a warmth and heaviness filling your body. Your feet become soft and your ankles are loose. The muscles in your calves soften and relax. Your knees release and a warm vibration runs into your thighs, melting away any tension in your legs. This warmth moves into your buttocks and softens your lower back as you feel yourself sink deeper and deeper into the sofa. A gentle heat trickles up and down your spine, relaxing each vertebra bit by bit. Your stomach becomes soft and your chest is open and free as you breathe slow and deep. Your arms hang heavy by your side and a soft vibration runs through them all the way into your hands and your fingertips. The muscles in your shoulders let go of all tension and a new warmth runs up into your neck, softening each muscle like butter melting. The muscles in your face are completely relaxed, your jaw is loose. Your lips are soft and your eyes are heavy. Any remaining thoughts, worries or concerns are falling away from you and fading out of sight. There is no need to think about anything at all. Your body can be heavy and your mind can be free. The wizard places a gentle hand on your forehead, reminding you that you are safe here and that he will watch over you tonight. You have so many adventures ahead of you and tomorrow you will spend a magical Christmas day in the heart of the Shire. But for now, it is time to rest. 
You are safe. You are cosy. And you are completely at peace. Tucked up in the beautiful home of your dear old halfling. It is time now to dream of beautiful things and to be filled with all the wonderful memories of the day as you give thanks for a magical Christmas Eve in the Shire. <laughs> 